Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. I had to think about that. Today is Wednesday. It is the fourth day of January 2023. I hope you're safe and healthy on this Wednesday and that your family's also safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders uh, out here every day trying to save lives as they try to save the young man from the Buffalo Bills. And apparently he's doing much better, according to his uncle, um, uh, that, that had the cardiac arrest on the field uh, a couple of days ago. So first responders are extremely important. Um, without them, a lot of lives, more lives would be lost than otherwise are. So blessings upon them and the people that work in the healthcare field trying every day to save lives. Um, blessings also upon those that are working, uh, picking up garbage, to pick up garbage to keep streets and sidewalks and buildings and parks clean. And those also that make deliveries like food and water and mail and things for our convenience in our life. Also, double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, and deliver, and recover the teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography. The victims of prostitution and child prostitution. The victims of human trafficking and sex slavery. Double curses. Double curses on the perpetrators. Double curses. Double curses on the profiteers and the perverts who are out here trafficking and involving this industry of human misery and degradation. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children on the streets right now in December, on January 4th, 2023. Mostly, there are children being raised on the streets. There are millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them. For theirs is the kingdom. Tonight, a, ga a basketball game is scheduled. The New York Knicks are taking on the San Antonio Spurs for the second time in a week. Last week, lost in San Antonio. This week, we're playing in the Garden. Um, I like our chances today. I like our chances for a number of reasons. Number one, the Knicks enter this game right now um, as far as um, opponents' points per game. They're ninth in the NBA. Net rating of 2.9, they're seventh in the NBA. Defensive rating, they're ninth in the NBA. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of people out here that just, you know, can't wait to jump all over Tom Thibodeau and about him being a defensive coach and not knowing what he's doing. There's some really sad folks out here that claim that they know basketball and have no idea what they're talking about. This numbers show what this man is about. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm Tom Thibodeau Hive, and I'm not ashamed of it. See, I don't go with the crowd. I go with what I see and what I know from my basketball acumen. And so, yes, seventh in the NBA in defensive and in, in net rating. Okay. Uh, 11th in offensive rating. 11th. He has no imagination, but they're 11th out of 30 in offensive rating. He has no offensive imagination. He doesn't know what he's doing offensively, but they're 11th out of 30. And they're ninth in defensive rating. And we ain't got started yet. They still getting better. So last, somebody, some people kept telling me, well, you're giving excuses. Wasn't no daggone excuse. They was tired last Thursday. It happens, like I said, to every NBA team. Do you guys know, last night, right? Last night, man. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder beat the Boston Celtics in Oklahoma City. 150. 150 Oklahoma rung up on them to 117. Now, is it an excuse to say Boston was tired? Do you guys understand that in the league, this I told y'all this can happen to anyone on any night? And that fatigue plays a role in the lulls of the season? Boston goes into Oklahoma City and loses by 33 last night. Boston, the number one team in the East. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. It was no excuse. They were tired, especially Mitchell Robinson. He had no legs, and it wasn't because of the heavy minutes. It's the season. Everybody goes through this. The whole league does, okay? It's, a, it's just part of being in the NBA, 82 games, you go through this, okay? Rookies hit, hit get an extra thing because they hit the wall. 
Okay, but every team gets tired legs at some point, and then you would happen just look like when you're working out. Sometimes when you're working out, especially when you're running, if you've ever been jogging, you start to feel tired at some point. But if you keep going, eventually you get that second win. Or, or when you're playing ball and you're tired, and you, you know you've been running all day, you get running several games, but then you get that second win. It happens in the NBA all the time. These are high level professional athletes, so they'll get tired, they'll get run down. Then they get that second win, and then they can keep going. And so last week, the the most important tired guy to me, but was two, was really was Mitchell Robinson was number one, and then Julius Randle. They were both they both didn't have it last night and last last week. And what Julius did, as I mentioned, he was saving his energy for the offensive end and neglecting the defensive end. And Mitch Rob just didn't have the energy last week. They got it now. So. I'm expecting a different result tonight. Now, San Antonio has just come off a beat. They got beat down by the Brooklyn Nets, which, honestly, the Brooklyn Nets are a better team than the New York Knicks right now. And so they caught a beat down um, Monday, Monday night. They caught a beat down from the Brooklyn Nets. They're on the road at the San Antonio. They're in New York now. They're tired. Now it's their turn. And there's no feeling sorry for people in the NBA. The NBA is like, like I said, it's like being in the jungle with animals. When you're weak, somebody's going to crush you. Now it's their turn. So the Nick, I'm expecting the Knicks. Now, right now, San Antonio lists only Devin Vassell as day-to-day questionable. And uh, Keita Bates-Diop is out. Uh, other than that, they should be pretty well, you know, full, full team ready to go. Um, The Knicks right now are listing, of course, R.J. Barrett is out, O.B. Toppin is out, Derrick Rose is day-to-day with the knee, and that's it. So we should pretty much, I mean, with the exception of Barrett, we should have our full contingent. That means Emmanuel Quickly is going to start. Jalen Brunson, Quentin Grimes, Emmanuel Quickly will be there at the small, I mean, at the uh, two-guard. Grimes will start a a small forward spot. You're going to get Randall, you're going to get Robinson, especially Robinson is important here. As I mentioned, he is the anchor of the New York defense. Okay, you you, you add to that anchor, high level perimeter defense. As I mentioned, with Deuce McBride and with uh, Quentin Grimes, and you will get some tremendous defense. Now I was looking yesterday at the numbers, the lineup numbers, and the different numbers for the players, um, as far as the plus minuses, right? And Barrett is a negative. Randall is a negative, okay? Brunson is a negative. They're all neg- net negative at this point. Now, I believe that's going to turn around because they start slow, right? But Grimes, Deuce, and Mitch Robb are all positive. Quick is positive. So Quick is about positive 8, no, positive 10. Deuce is about positive 10. Um, Grimes is about positive 8. Mitch Robb is positive 13. So them cats, you want to play as much as you can because, and with with all of them, actually, during their whole career, it's been mostly like that for them. You know, especially the second year guys, your Grimes and your your McBrides, they've been positive every time since they've been stepping on the court, anytime they step on the court. So, and in fact, what we know now is the Knicks are 17 and four when Deuce McBride plays more than 15 minutes. The cat, the kid, like quickly, quickly may not shoot well, sometimes. But when you look up, he's always plus. Okay, he may go one for 12, but when he's on the floor, they play better. He's, he's always plus. So, uh, like I said, the key here, quickly is starting. So we're not losing anything. I mean, RJ, bigger, stronger, but um, but quick is not going to, you're going to lose anything. And then you're going to get a high level defender at the three in Grimes. Um, and then, of course, you bring Deuce off the bench. So you're going to have that defense. It's going to be much more energetic tonight, led by Mitchell Robinson. You're going to have uh, Julius Randle. And Julius is the type of guy that remembers things like what happened last Thursday. And he's going to come for vengeance, along with Mitchell Robinson. The only thing that could slow us down from steamrolling these guys tonight is the guys in the referees' uniforms with their whistles. If they start acting stupid, that's going to keep... And they have done that. They can keep an opponent in a game where they would otherwise get blown out. So if we can get some fair whistles today, um, I'm expecting a good night for the New York Knicks uh, tonight. So, yeah, I was looking at the net ratings here. And as far as the Knicks, the top, okay, so the top five 
um, played only 23 minutes, but that's uh, Robinson, Reddish, Randall, Brunson, and Barrett. That, that's plus 41. <laughs> but they only played 23 minutes together. With significant minutes, you had 92 minutes played by Grimes, McBride, Quickly, Randall, and Robinson. So see here, you have McBride, the McBride, Grimes, uh, Robinson trio, plus Quickly and Randall. 92 minutes they played together. That's plus 17. See, that's plus 17. The starting lineup is now plus 13. That is Barrett, Brunson, Grimes, Randall, Robinson. That's plus That's plus 13. Okay, but now Randall, I mean, now um, with RJ out, still, we're, and then of course, like I said, you put quickly in almost any lineup, it's going to be positive because this guy, you know, he just affects winning like that. And that's what Tibbs is talking about, what affects winning. And that's it's a very true and good statement. What affects winning? And so, um, throw out, you know, if it's quickly shot one for 12 or Deuce ain't hitting this three. They affect winning in a positive way. And the bottom line is this. I think a lot of people get lost on this. The end result is the Knicks, I want, as, as a fan, I want the Knicks to win. I want them to win every time they step on the floor. I want them to get to the playoffs and win. Sometimes I think people are getting more caught up in, in, in like what it looks like. Like if this player was on our team, if we had Zach Levine, man, what would that look like? He wouldn't help us win. He won't do a better job helping us win than Quentin Grimes. Okay. And so that's why I'm saying, and it ain't, some people are thinking it's a Barrett. Some people, some of these guys, I don't know. The Knicks are not trading RJ Barrett for Levine. Chicago will be looking for Grimes, and we ain't doing that either. Okay? So, the idea is to win. Okay? That's the idea. And so, you have a win-now coach in Tom Thibodeau with a group of youngins that the Knicks have drafted, and he trusts them. This is a very good situation. So, you're playing Grimes, McBride, Quickly, Robinson, you're playing them enough so they got 92 minutes together. And the Knicks are now seventh. Seventh in the in in the, in net rating. Ninth in defensive rating. Eleventh in offensive rating. Not many teams are that high in both categories. Offensive and defensive rating. Okay? And as I'm saying to you, they're gonna get better. We're on a the, the Knicks are going to get better as the year goes on. Especially, like I said, when, when, when RJ comes back and OB comes back and you get your full nine-man contingent the way Tibbs originally had it, you're going to see some things, okay? You're going to see some things. They're going to get better. Are they going to have some losing streaks? Yeah, small ones. I think, yeah. But they're going to have some winning streaks? Yeah. And I'm saying 45 plus wins. 45 minimum, okay? So... I'm excited about the game tonight. Um, I'm, 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 I don't want to be overly confident because, you know, anybody could beat anybody in the NBA on any given night. But I don't think the Knicks are going to be overly confident. What I believe they're going to be is hungry and mad. <laughs> and they're going to come for revenge today. That's what I'm thinking. And, yes, I'm expecting a good night. So, um, you know, like I said, man, 730 tonight is on. Tip up at Madison Square Garden. It's not Friday night, it's Wednesday. We're going to be in good shape this time. Uh, I'm looking for the Knicks to get this W. Y'all enjoy your Wednesday. Be safe out there. Shalom.